Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is going to be the resin review for the LiCreate Castable Wax Resin. Um, I've done a number of tests so far, and this is what I've come up with here. So the first thing I did is I started with their most recommended base settings. Um, I started with this model here, and you can see it's a little bit worse for wear. Um, it's basically fallen apart. Um, I had essentially a, out of all 15 of these hollow balls, I had 12 of them fail, which is a pretty high rate. Uh, they all failed at the same spot because there wasn't, uh, basically the exposure wasn't enough. The balls are held together with a lattice of 0.2 millimeter struts, I suppose. And they basically form the majority of the structure. And they all failed at the same point, right at the second level. So basically uh, the natural inclination after that is to increase the exposure time, which I did. I, I upped that to 10 and a half seconds per layer instead of the eight and a half as it was recommended. And I got a great print. Uh, it actually worked out perfectly. There's one, I've actually crushed it because I was kind of testing the, uh, you know, just how strong is the resin. And uh, out of this one, I had, I think 14 out of 15 turn out perfectly. Uh, it's very possible that it, the, the one broke when it was going into the wash. That's, that's fine. Um, there's very little deformation on these balls. These prints turned out really nice overall. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and I started using the 10 and a half seconds as kind of my base. So after we finished with the balls, uh, we moved on to our own models. Um, I ran this test bed more than a few times, um, four times to be exact. The first time was an absolute failure and they all failed in almost all the same way. I identified a few factors that I had to change to make it print better. Um, and this is so far the best one. Uh, number one is I stuck with my exposure setting of 10 and a half seconds per layer. Uh, unlike their support, um, recommending I stick with eight and a half. Uh, I found, I did try it and I ran into just problems. Um, it was just structurally completely wrong. Basically the, the this cross, for example, was sagged entirely. Uh, there was almost no flat spots on it. It was just not right anyway. So I stuck with 10 and a half seconds. I also heated the resin quite a bit more than it was recommended by their their support. There is a target temperature that you're meant to uh, heat the resin to before you print. Um, because this is a wax-based material, uh, the cooler it is, the more viscous it gets. Uh, below a certain temperature, it actually becomes like solid, apparently. So we had to heat it, and that basically made it more fluidous and print better, which is good. Um, I heated it, I think, to probably 30 degrees Celsius. Um, basically, I just boiled some water into a mug and put the container in it. I just cracked the lid just in case there was any pressure buildup. And that worked really, really well. The, the next thing I did was I increased my layer height. Um, the failed print, the most, or sorry, the most failed print was at 0 0.025 millimeters, which is a pretty common jewelry height, you know, layer height. Um, if you're not, if you're just beginning into this, uh, layer height is very important because you're going to see the stepped lines of every layer on your jewelry. And especially if it's in a little tiny detailed area, it's going to be very difficult to get rid of. So we want to have that as small as possible. I stepped it up to 0 0.05 millimeter layer heights and kept it at 10 and a half seconds. And that improved it drastically. So the overall print experience wasn't the easiest I've ever experienced. Um, I still haven't managed to get a flawless print. Like we're talking zero warpage, no pooling, nothing. It's It's got to be flawless. I haven't managed to get that yet, but I've got pretty close. And I've accepted that fact. I'm also running low on the test resin anyway, so got to do what you got to do. Um, we're going to move on to the castability next. And I think this is where it's going to shine. Um, most wax-based resins cast flawlessly. Um, it's generally the printing that seems to be the hard part. 
There are very few actual, you know, wax-based resins out there that I've tried um, where the printing stage was really easy. Uh, and that's just a fact. It's, it's, it's a trade-off. Do you want it to cast flawlessly or do you want it to print flawlessly? It tends to be you pick one or the other and hopefully they meet somewhere in the middle. So it's been a few days and we have done our casting for the LaCreate resin. And I'm coming more to a verdict of how much I like and how much I dislike it. For starters, the cast went very well. We cast in bronze. Um, I've cast in this bronze before. I use silicon bronze and uh, I know how to get a decent cast out of it. Good temperatures, flask temps, all that stuff. So that's a non-issue right now. Um, but the casting is not without issues. The depiction that they have on their website, there's like a little thumbnail image. Uh, it looks kind of sandblasted. There's a little bit of pitting before the item has been cleaned up. And that is actually a very good representation of the sort of finish we're getting. It's not nearly as pronounced as it looks on the website. It's very subtle in a way, but there is definitely a surface texture. I noticed as well that we have a bit of flashing just around the inside here. It's very, very slight, which is not a too big a deal because it can just break off. That there is flashing at all means there was a little bit of thermal expansion in some of the more thin, brittle areas, which is not ideal. Uh, there's also thermal expansion a little bit around the prongs and around some of the, um, the round settings. So overall, not terrible. I've definitely cast worse material. Uh, something I notice as well is that this resin is or at least this, these models were fairly sticky because it doesn't require post curing. The, the surface hardness doesn't get, you know, bone dry. Um, so in other words, little bits of dust, I see a couple little particles of, uh, what looks like the little nubs from supports are kind of stuck to the surface that I must've missed little things like that, which actually came out in the casting, which is interesting. Uh, so in terms of detail, it can definitely do details. The overall dimension and accuracy of the prints is very good. What I got, what I got back in casting is exactly what I put in. Um, but you have to remember that the prints were not flawless. We had quite a number of, um, you know, like a sagging kind of a bleeding issue in the corners specifically. Uh, where it just kind of like drooped and filled in those nice crisp angles. So again, not ideal. Uh, according to an email, I, after I, I reached out to them and I said, I'm not able to get good prints, like not flawless prints. And they responded basically saying that I should stick to their um, recommended settings. So I did. Uh, and then I also heated it. I tried doing different methods of um, washing the prints. So rather than you know running through the whole wash cycle in the CW1, I, I just kind of dipped it quickly and rinsed it. Um, that didn't really have too much of an effect. This stuff is pretty chemically stable. It doesn't react much with IPA. So my overall impressions and kind of a summary for printability. Um, this stuff is as advertised. However, you do need to dial it in. In other words, I didn't find their settings to be the perfect settings on my particular printer, on a different printer, like one of the Frozens that have a much more um, powerful light source. They can harden the resin a lot better. Maybe you'll find a little bit more luck. Um, the other thing you have to tailor your print settings to your model type. In other words, if you have a very spindly model like this, with you know just cage-like, very very filigree-esque, versus something big and chunky like this, you do need to tailor your settings. So expect to have to do a little bit of playing with your your printer before you get an absolutely flawless print, which is not ideal. So considering that you have to dial in your your settings based on the type of model you're printing, I would strongly recommend going with one of the larger bottles, as they are. You know, you're gonna have to waste a little bit of resin probably to get this going. However, considering the price, uh, it's not terrible. Uh, about $135 before shipping and all that other stuff uh, when it comes to the full one kilo bottle. So in terms of, you know, some of my favorite resins are double or triple that even. And, um, you know, you can definitely afford to play at that kind of price. 
So to summarize the overall cast ability of the Le Create resin, it is very decent. Um, I have tried much worse resins, and this stuff is much better than those. The overall finish is not flawless. As I said before, you put it, you get out what you put in, so that's good to know. At least there's that level of stability. If you can get a flawless print, then you're going to get a nice casting back. There is a little bit of surface texture, but it's very manageable, seeing as how you're probably going to have to put a little bit of like sanding into it. That'll probably all buff out. And then there was that little bit of the issue with the flashing. However, flashing is extra material and it was very, very thin. So you can just kind of break it off. Not too big of a deal. So the overall summary, would I recommend Le Create Blue Castable to you? Um, yes, if you're on a budget. And specifically, if you're in Europe as well, as this is a European country, um, they will be able to prov provide to you on a much easier scale than they are to us here in North America. So unfortunately for us, uh, seeing as how we've tried so many different resins, we're kind of snooty when it comes to them. Um, I won't be adding this to my rotation of resins. I just have experienced other ones that are better. Um, but if you're on a budget, I strongly recommend starting with this resin. You can at least get the, get the feel for it. It does require a little bit of expertise and patience when it comes to the printing side. However, if you already have that under your belt and you just wanna try something on a more of a budget level, this is a pretty good resin to start with. So unfortunately, we will be ranking this resin a little bit lower on our list, which is available to members through our YouTube uh, membership program. Um, that will be updated very shortly after we kind of gather our thoughts and update that list. On that list, it does rank all of the different resins that we've tried. I believe this is number nine. Um, and then we actually have another one coming as well. So there will be more <laughs> coming. And it basically breaks down how well each resin prints uh, and casts and uh, the cost overall and just how much we liked it based off of our own personal experience. So that's all we have to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, drop us a comment and I will be happy to answer your questions. I will see you guys in the next video.